Good morning and welcome back to Live Urban Wild. Today is Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. We're here at our session on what we call the ninth day at Live at Urban Wild. Showing and proving that all lives matter in an abundance mentality. This is what observing here, Madam Chi, our matriarch, deciding that she doesn't want to eat anymore, either by choice or because she's been disturbed, and all the other cats with all this beautiful food it's been laid out in abundance that they don't have to fight over you see here there's extra food spread out and yes there's a cat there there's also so much that is just being left behind because of the abundance beautiful to see how they leave food behind for the counterparts, that's the one that was injured for a while with the injured back. It looks nice to see that it looks healed now. As we call the cat to the wall. We're coming up tomorrow night. It's the beginning of this year's Passover holiday. And celebrations or rituals where we tell about the story of leaving Egypt and how the children of Israel became a nation. They became a nation of Israel. It wasn't the Jewish nation became the nation of Israel, the people of Israel, made up of the 12 plus 1 tribes, they were led to the promised land after many trials and tribulations, and after many tests, tests in the sense where everyone was offered the choice, and everyone took the opportunity, everyone was offered freedom, and everybody accepted or wanted it. Everyone was offered a chance to live a better new life according to sensible laws that put life over materialism, to put sharing and caring over owning. Look at the But most people said no. Most people didn't accept. When I say most people, I mean that the story of the Exodus, well, when does it start, when does it end? But the story of the Exodus talks about the children of Israel being forced to leave their home due to famine. The children of Israel selling their brother into slavery over a family dispute. The children of Israel having the option or being put in the position not of power in Egypt not to rule which one might think would be the key but they were put in a position of weakness and segregation in order to prove that there's a better way of life if it's lived properly but instead most people caved, most people gave in, most people became idol worshippers, most people failed. And then, there was an opportunity to leave with the tw ten plagues that showed that we are not in control of nature. <sighs> even if you have magicians, even if you have sorcerers, no matter what you have, we are not in control of nature. So the Creator used His power and his control to manipulate nature and to try to tell people nature will take over if people don't do the right thing. Here's the cat, the little kitten with the injured neck on the other side. Hopefully it's healing and doing better. And then unfortunately most people didn't get the message. So depending on the tradition, the sages between 99 and a half 
to 80%, meaning between 80% and 99.5% of where the children of Israel perished in the 10 plague, specifically the 9th plague, and weren't allowed to leave. And then, once they did leave, those few that left under the unique conditions they left, we're given choice after choice after choice, given instructions and guidance time after, guidance, time after time, but decided to learn things the hard way. Sometimes not enough when you're a child, no matter how much you know, even if you're an adult, no matter how much you know, you need to experience things your own way, the hard way, live life your own way. That's okay if you're prepared for the consequences, but even then from the few, from that between half a percent and 20% that actually left Egypt that went through the desert because of other sins that had to do with desiring meat and other wants over needs. Most people, the whole entire generation that left Egypt, bar a few, died in the, died in the desert on their way, their 40-year journey, their 38-year journey from Egypt to Israel, which should be just a border crossing. It had to be done the complicated way to weed out the right from the wrong. And then still, we have those very few of the very few of the very few of the very few which represents today the Jewish people, and it's the Jewish people now and not the children of Israel because that's what happened. With all those exiles, with all those thinning, culling of the herds, and with all those thinning of the people, almost no one was left, and by the time they got to Israel, it was very few. They had to fight giants. Well, not fight, they had to contend with giants. The whole idea was not to fight. They had to live with giants present, and believing that if they follow the path to the right way, that they'll survive. It lasted as long as it did, and of course there were always troubles and trials and tribulations. So finally there was a king, and there was a second one, and then his son built the temple. It lasted a certain amount of time, and there was a civil war which led to the people of Israel being split between Israel and the tribe of Judah, and that's when it all kind of fell apart. And we're still trying to figure things out since then by defining the land of Israel, the state of Israel, and the people of Israel to be defined by who's a Jew. It's a mistake one that if we wake up soon enough we'll be able to correct and if we don't wake up soon enough correction will be done for us it's not a warning and it's not a threat it's just a promise at this point because the planet will survive the ideals will survive and the truth will survive but most people don't survive which is why today Whoever we are, and however you count us versus them, the us being those who are alive, versus the them being the ones who didn't make it today. There's some calculations that say that the human experience totals 100 million different people from whatever beginning of time counted what humanity is until today. Which means that the 8 billion people alive today are 8 out of 100 billion experiences. Of course there's survivor's guilt. Meaning, we are the survivors, whoever's here today are the ones who survived. The other 92 billion didn't, just because of history and time and reality. So we are the survivors, we are the survivors that have this situation that we've inherited. Political, social, economic, ecological, this situation we've inherited where things have to be dealt with. That's so we're the survivors, and what do we tell? What do we tell the others? What do we tell those who didn't survive? What do we tell those that we left behind in our own lifetime? In our prayers, in our thoughts, what do we tell them? What are we going to do to make this world a better place? What do we do to deserve being here? What do you do to deserve to be here? Well, nothing yet. But if we make the right decisions, and if we do the right choices, if we move forward realizing that we have what to protect, what to secure, and what to correct, for the future, for our future, and for our future's future. Does anybody in the world that we care about or love? 
or simply if we want our own future to be better, that's within our control. And that happy note, I believe that's what the message of the Passover story is and the Seder night. It's not about remembering we left Egypt, remembering how bad it was, remembering that it could always be worse. And then repeating, blather, rinse, repeat. I believe strongly that it's about bringing that better place to be through our efforts, through our concentration, through our focus, through our intentions, through everything we do to manifest that better place. And when we say at the end of the Passover Haggadah, the end of the ceremony that we do, everyone in their own way, we say next year in the rebuilt Jerusalem it can be this year in the rebuilt Jerusalem. Jerusalem's been rebuilt in a while, and of course it's talking there about the temple. But it's not the temple where we can bring sacrifices, because that's what we want to aim for, is a temple where we can build sacrifices. We've already made those temples to build sacrifices. That's what we've been doing all this time in the diaspora, living in the diaspora, while we're in the state of Israel. Because you see, the, that stage where we have the temple to bring sacrifice, sacrifice, that's a correction mode. Effectively, that's been the mode we've been in since World War II, more or less. We've been doing all the things we can to remember our mistakes. Never again, never again, never again, never again, never again, until the point that we keep repeating everything. You forgot what we're talking about. If the never again is genocide or speciesicide or hatred well we're back so that we can't see never again if the never again is that we're going to let our children become victims of despot re regimes and turn them to slaves and commodities and numbered instead of valued and everyone put a price on them of where they fit into a bigger system to make someone else rich well, if you want to see never again to that, unfortunately, it's not never again. We're, we're doing that on steroids. Never again should be. We never again want to go back to repeating the mistakes of the past. We're intelligent enough. We're aware enough. We're enlightened enough. And we're scarred enough through experiences that some call trauma, which we can learn from. Because trauma is a combination of event and the actual psychological and emotional trauma. When you learn how to separate the actual event from the actual trauma, we can move on. So our trauma wasn't the fact that we can't identify who's a Jew. The trauma is that we've pigeonholed our identities. Look at how we pigeonhole our identities into things that are impossible to accomplish. We put titles and concepts and ideals that are impossible and abstract and never meant really to be done for most people. Not everyone can be a king, not everyone can be everyone. Everyone can be who they are. I'm not going to start mentioning all the different things we can't be because someone can be everything. And then there's another thing, meaning we all can be who we can be and we can be amazing at what that is as long as we're not going by someone else's de definition. I have um, some redistribution work to do as far as giving the cats attention and cleaning up. But I'm hoping that this message gets out to those who need to hear it. I'm hoping this message gets out to those who care. And I'm hoping that when we say the things that we say, we can at least have some intention and real hope. I'm not just trying to get through something that someone else told us to tell someone else and we forgot why. I'm hoping everyone has a meaningful life, a meaningful day, a meaningful week, and meaningful transition into this better way of doing things moving forward. Welcome to the ninth day. Infinite love and gratitude. Welcome to